Brian, hello. Um, so I'm from the UK Met Office. I'm going to carry on the sort of Pacific theme that we had yesterday. Um, it's been quite a long week so far, so to wake you all up, hands up who thinks the uh, Pacific Decadal Oscillation is actually... Can you hear me now? Yeah. Hands up who thinks the Pacific Decadal Oscillation is actually predictable. Anyone? Oh. <laughs> hands up who thinks it might be predictable in the future. Are we optimistic? Sorry? Well, well I'm, you want a caveat. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> decay, on a decadal time scale with a climate model. Yeah, are we getting there? <laughs> a, few, a few hands. Thanks for uh, indulging me. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, so there are many indices for looking at Pacific decadal variability. We've looked at quite a few of them this week so far. I'm going to look at a couple in this talk. Um, initially, I'm going to think about the Pacific decadal oscillation as an EOF on, um, on temperatures uh, with the global mean temperature removed. Um, here you've got the... Uh, Oops. So this is the sort of standard observed EOF pattern that we've seen a lot of recently. Um, this is an average of the pattern that I get from the initialized decadal hindcast from the CMIP5 data set. So the pattern's looking pretty good. Um, as Matt Newman might point out, it could be a PDO-like pattern rather than an actual PDO pattern, but it, you know, it's getting the same kind of variability going on in the North Pacific, and you've got the tropical node down here. Um, as some people have pointed out already, this, this node does go a little bit too far west, but you know, there's something going on in the model that's also possibly going on in the observations. There's been a nice study recently by Dong et al. doing a much more simple uh, definition for Pacific variability. Here they've just broken it down into two simple box averages. We've got a North Pacific box, and you take this away from the tropical box. So I'm going to look at both of these in the models, in the CMIP5 models. So now I've got time series. The uh, shaded dark um, line is the observations. We've got the EOF definition up here, and then this box average PDV index definition down here. Um, the red lines are the initialized CMIP5 decadal hindcasts, and the blue lines are a similar set of uninitialized decadal hindcasts. Now, I, for both of these time series, I'm actually getting some skill for the PDO. The, the correlation is looking at about 0.5, so we kind of thought, oh, this is quite interesting. I would like to add a small caveat that I'm going to come back to later on, that as Neil pointed out, um, linearly detrending can cause issues, and this is the type of detrending that we've actually used in this, so I will come back to this. But initially we kind of thought, oh cool, we've got a correlation of 0.5, yay! <laughs> um, breaking down the uh, box average definition, you, you can kind of have a look at what, um, how much influence the North Pacific box is having and how much influence the Tropical Pacific box is having. So now we've got these time series for the, uh, the North Pacific box at the top and the Tropical Pacific box at the bottom, remembering that we have linearly detrended these. And you can see straight away that the North Pacific box is driving the whole of this sort of PDO pattern. Um, we've got a correlation of 0.8, whereas for the Tropical Pacific box we've only got correlation of 0 0.0. I should have said this is five-year means. We're looking at kind of, you know, long-term kind of changes. Um, so all the model skill is coming from the Northern Pacific. So it's not really a proper PDO thing. But Now we come back to this point that detrending, linearly detrending, can actually cause some issues in our assessment of skill indicator models. So here on the top panel, we've got the original plot, the linearly detrended uh, North Pacific region. Um, and you've got this nice sort of um, periodic kind of thing going on. But if you look at just the anomalies, we've now got a correlation of just 0.6. And you can see that perhaps, the, um, although the observations, you've still got this kind of nice, nice pattern showing. Um, in the model now, we're not getting that at all. We're not getting this positive phase here. We're just getting this rising up from um, around the 1980s. So it looks like we might actually be putting in some artificial skill into our model. This is particularly because we've been removing a linear trend on quite a short period. The hindcasts only go from 1960 onwards, and this happens to be mainly looking at the, the rising part of this sort of PDO type shape. Um, I should point out here as well that the uninitialized hindcasts all have very similar skill. Um, so this is quite important that it doesn't feel like on these timescales that initialization is actually really helping. You can also see a similar problem in the fields of temperature. So now we've got the correlation for five-year mean um, temperatures over the whole of the globe. Um, the left plot is the linearly detrended plot. The, the central plot is 
the sort of raw anomalies. And then on the right, we've got the uh, linearly detrended minus the anomalies. And you, you can see, I mean, normally we expect that linearly detrending is going to reduce our skill. We kind of use it as a, as a, as a way of showing how well our models are doing sort of around the global mean trend. Um, because it's very easy to get high correlations if everything's warming. It doesn't matter if the model's warming more than the observations, you're still going to get a good correlation. So to try and get an idea of how the model is doing around this trend, we tend to use linear trending as a technique to assess this. But you can see that, um, in general, this is a fairly OK method. The, uh, the correlation has decreased over much of the globe. But in this particular North Pacific box, we're actually seeing an increase in skill. This is partially due to trends in this region over the hindcast period, there's very little trend in the observations, um, whereas there's quite a, a large, there's still some trend in the model. Um, and, yeah. and also, just as a reminder, we've, um, you can also see in, in both these plots that there's less skill on decadal timescales in the uh, tropical Pacific, which is something that's been pointed out yesterday quite a bit. So, detrending, it might be adding artificial skill, but um, we've sort of shown that the initialized hindcasts are doing similarly well to the uninitialized hindcasts. So now I've extended my analysis to look back over the whole of the transient run historical uh, ensemble set from the CMIP5. And you can kind of see the problem again, that if you, if you linearly detrend on this short time period, you're getting this nice U shape, this nice part of the oscillation. But if you use the whole, um, going back to 1880 of the historical runs and detrend over the whole period, you can straight away see that you're not, um, you're not getting this uh, positive phase anymore because it's just due to uh, detrending over such a short time period that you've added an artificial cooling in the model that isn't really there. Also, you can see that the correlation drops. So in the uninitialized runs over, the, over this period, we've got a correlation of 0.6, whereas once you extend it back, all the way to 1880, it's only 0.2. So if we go back to the idea of the, the PDO index, now if we do it on the perhaps more standard method of taking out the global mean temperature rather than linearly detrending, this is perhaps a more realistic idea of the skill level. We've now got correlations of just 0.4 and um, just 0.3 when you use the, uh, this box average method. So we could say, you know, there is some skill, but it's a very modest, very kind of low skill. And as I've said, this is all really coming from the North Pacific box still. Um, and it's also coming from the initialized models as much as it is coming from the uninitialized models. And I know, Paco, you've done some work with a Leona paper a couple of years ago that um, this could be picking up on the second EOF rather than the first EOF in temperature, that there is some skill on longer time scales from what they call the, um, the North Pacific dry oscillation. So if there is some skill coming from the uninitialized models, then it's kind of, um, we've, we've got a good set of data at the moment from the CMIP5 data set to have a little look at uh, which part of the external forcings might be driving some of this, um, this pattern. So I've looked quickly at the aerosol-only runs and the natural-only runs. Um, and these are, t these are, first of all, uh, correlation plots with the aerosol-only and the natural-only. Um, over the hindcast period, this is five-year means, and you can see that both the aerosol and the natural forcings seem to be inducing some sort of correlation in the North Pacific, but they're not, they're not at all influencing the tropical Pacific. And you can also see it in terms of time series. So here we've got the historical runs going all the way back to 1880. If you look at just the recent hindcast period, for the aerosol-only runs, the correlation is around 0.5. We're getting quite a high, high correlation in this, this period. And this, the gray bar is meant to be showing the kind of residual noise that you'd expect just from ensemble averaging for the amount of members that you've got in this ensemble. And it is coming out. There is slightly more variance in the ensemble means, suggesting there could be some real, real signal in this. Um, and similarly for the natural, but the correlation is only 0.3. But then once you go back all the way to 1880, this correlation drops to, to sort of a negligible 0.2 and 0.1. This kind of um, you know, fits in with a, with a lot of stuff that people have been saying this week, including in Doug's talk earlier on today, that there seems to be something special going on in the most recent period, and aerosols seem to potentially be having an impact because they come into action in around the 1950s, whereas if you go back on longer time scales, they're not so apparent. Um, so if this, is a, I mean, if this is a real result, then we, you know, we need to know more about what aerosols are doing in the, in the recent past and also what they're going to be doing in the future. 
zones, summary. Um, models seem to capture the Pacific variability OF patterns very well. Okay, maybe this is um, PDO-like patterns, but they, you know, all the models are sort of showing some signs of getting the right variability. There's moderate skill for the Pacific index, but um, this is amplified artificially. If you linearly detrend the, the temperature fields, it's important to, to find another method to look at this. And the skill is mainly coming from the North Pacific, so it's not a true kind of Pacific decadal oscillation they were getting in the model. It's very much a North Pacific driven um, variability. There seems to be some signal from external forcings, and we're guessing that this is looks like anthropogenic aerosols could be important, but also natural factors and likely volcanoes. Um, so an important uh, future point is to try and get really realistic projections of aerosols for the future if we're going to make uh, robust kind of um, projections for the future. So thank you. Any questions? <laughs>